Hey guys, welcome back to Keith's Garage. Thanks for checking out my next video. This video is personally uh, rewarding for me. This is my third attempt at sharing information on this topic today. A proper valve set. I've done it a few times in other videos, but I've never done a full video on all the steps to get through the valve set properly. I'm going to show you how to do that right from start to finish in a test drive. I'll go through all my findings. This car definitely needed a valve set. Uh, we're also going to talk about some changes I made to my ignition system. Uh, I found a couple of interesting things in the ignition system that uh, uh, definitely would have had some issues with, with the engine and it running smooth. I got my engine uh, miss dialed in. It's sorted out. It's all taken care of. So stick around for that. And um, also, we're going to get on the topic of the Dodge Ram logo. A friend of mine has a 1938 Dodge. I mentioned about him in the video here. A special thank you to Derek. He supplied me uh, with some good information on how to fix my snap-on tachometer. I was having problems with. Thank you, Derek. And uh, we're going to showcase Derek's Ram hood ornament. And you'll see why. There's a special treat coming up. Uh, stick around for that. And um, if you like what you see, please hit subscribe and like button. I love it. Uh, you're going to enjoy this one. It's, it's going to be a fairly good lengthy video, so grab a popcorn and, and sit down and enjoy. Thanks for coming along. Hey, folks. So yesterday, one of my subscribers is in town. And uh, we hooked up. He came up to the house. And uh, we had a great great visit uh he's a gearhead like me he's a mopar guy and man i, I i'm in a smaller town here in canada i'm not too small but about a hundred thousand people and i've been trying to find another mopar gearhead and it's been four years now i get to find one locally in town here that i can hang out with and maybe work on each other's cars but so he was passing through unfortunately he doesn't live in this town but we would went over my stuff we looked at my car look at my block look at spare parts man we, we talked two hours flew by like that uh, took him out for a cruise on my 38 uh, Chrysler here, and it was just a beautiful, just a, just an epic evening. You know, it was like about 28, 30 degrees Celsius and as the sun was setting, and we cruised and went on the highway, checked out the overdrive. You know, I think I'm going to do a video on the overdrive. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. Only coming up. I'll give you the features and benefits of the overdrive. Um, and it was just awesome. But I guess what, what I find, what I, got, what, what I want to say, I got something to say about it is, what a cool community to be a part of, to be able to, you know, find friends with common interests in old cars. As, you know, and we're pretty specific around here in this driveway with Mopars, and to find another guy that's right in there, he's got a 1938 Dodge sedan, um, just like my Plymouth, same factory. It's basically a Plymouth with Dodge badging, or, or my Plymouth is a Dodge <laughs> with Plymouth badging. Very same car, and he restored it, and he's won lots of wars and stuff with it. He didn't have it here, unfortunately. I wish I, I'm gonna go see him. He's about a four hour drive away. I'm gonna to have to go check out his collection. Anyways, when you get together with similar uh, interests, um, you can teach each other stuff. And he taught me something. So I think it's really cool that in a lot of my videos, I'm teaching you guys stuff, but he came to my house and he taught me something. It was, it was fantastic. So you may know I've been struggling with the RPM, the tack, on my snap-on dwell meter. It, some days it works, some days it doesn't. It, it seems to be intermittent, right? I couldn't figure it out. So he tells me that you have to hook it up before you start the engine. If you do that, it'll work. I thought, well, how did you figure that out? Trial and error, he says, you know, screwing around. Like me, wondering why isn't this working? Which around here generally relates to, you know, frustration and cussing and a couple beers. But he, he figured it out. So we're gonna try it. I just set the dwell uh, with a feeler gauge. I used 18 thou uh, and it's a little tight. They come up around 20 degrees dwell. It should be uh, 38. So let's fire it up, see if we can get the RPM working, the tack, get the tachometer working, and then we'll check the dwell. RP. 
RPM is working. It's a little low. That's that's a good. I'm gonna let the car warm up, see where the uh, the engine RPM is, and I'll adjust it. Right now I'm, I'm about 250, 275. Check the dwell. Yeah, 20 degrees. That's no good. I gotta be up here. So it works. I almost took this darn thing apart and replaced every capacitor in it and resoldered every joint. I was thinking I might have to rebuild it, right? I, I could do that. But don't need to when you use it properly. All right, so not to dwell on the topic of dwell here, but I'm not going to actually show you a video on how to set the dwell and distributor. Uh, most people have done it. I know there's some new people here, and that's awesome. Uh, thank you. Um, but it's 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 tight down inside the engine bay there. It's dark. Um, best place to do that would probably be on a bench, you know, with a, with all good lighting. I've been in there with this little micro wrench, uh, just adjusting it. It's a trial and error thing. You turn it on. I think it's like this is my third setting now. Let's see if we're at 38. I'll fire it up here. All right, so after one, two, three, four, five attempts to get the dwell at 38 degrees, I'm like, something's wrong here. I just can't get it to set right. I pull the distributor out again, I get to looking. Let me show you what I found. This is the breaker plate for a 1938 Chrysler, early 38. They changed the point style, but what you've got here, this is, this is obviously the points that open and close here, and they touch this little set of, this is the, this is the ground connection here, a little piece of tongues in there. You adjust this screw and you adjust this plate up and down to adjust your gap. Well, every time I adjusted it, it seemed to be getting going backwards or I hit 38 for a second and something would bump or move and then it would drop to 20. So I took this off. So this is what I found on the original set of points. That's just the spring that holds tension on the points there. So as the distributor shaft is turning and spinning, the points open here. And you adjust the dwell, the points gap, by backing off this lock nut here and then put a micro wrench on the points here and thread it down to open the gap. And when I was adjusting this, I wasn't getting good results. My timing was jumping around. Not my timing, but my dwell was jumping around. I would get it set at about 35 to 38 and then I'd go back and check it again and it would jump and it would move to like 20 again. And I was kept adjusting this and after about a half hour of, maybe not a half an hour, after about 15 minutes of trial and error I thought this isn't working, something's wrong here. So I took it apart and took this out and a look at it. So after I took it apart, I had a look at it, and this is so vitally important, such a tiny little part. This will make or break your car. It will not run. The threads on this, they've been stripped here on this end. So be careful, a little too much force on this nut, I may have done that. I don't know, but it will not sit nicely and hold the proper gap if those threads are done. So we have now uh, upgraded the breaker plate to a, a little bit more modern style. When I say modern, I'm still talking late 30s through 53, 54 or so for the life of the flathead 6 engine. They use that new updated style points. All right, let's see if we can get you a shot of the, the guts of the new distributor here. Hopefully you can see it there. Take the uh, rotor off. So the new distributor is adjusted here. When I say new, I guess the updated distributor. Looks like a, about halfway through 1938 that Royals came with this distributor. And uh, 
this backing uh, breaking plate here. You uh, this is a, there's a lock screw up here. You just back that off a little bit, and then this big screw at the the bottom over this area right here behind my finger. It's off center. You turn it. It adjusts the, the gap by adjusting this plate here and moving it up and down. Increase the gap. So we've gone to that style of points now, and uh, that would be the same as in my 38 Plymouth. Uh, my 53 Chrysler had the exact same thing. Um, they're reliable. They work fine. Uh, easier to get. The earlier points I showed you a second ago are more challenging for me to get. I ordered them on eBay, and I'm about a month waiting, and they're not here yet. I'm not going to need them now. I'm probably going to stick with this. It's reliable and it works well and readily available. I probably got three or four spare sets of these points brand new here in my parts inventory, so I'm good for years. So all this this little small stuff that I've been finding in my engine lately, the uh, ignition system, um, you can it can drive you nuts, or you can uh, use it uh, to enhance your skills. Uh, if, you, you, if you're reading and you're researching and you're learning and then you're troubleshooting, you're going to be a better mechanic. And you just really get specialized on the, on the Mopar line if, if that's really what you're focused on. It's, it's a pretty cool experience. Lots of little, little things that uh, you just got to get right. Uh, don't, don't let it get you down. Keep going, learning, reach out, look for help. Lots of reading. One of the other things I found in the engine I wanted to point out was the ignition coil. You're probably aware. I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but it's a, uh, it's a, it's an interesting little device. But I kind of remind myself it's 1938, and this is an anti-theft device, believe it or not. So the ignition key goes in here and just sits in the dash, and this metal shielding here protects the ignition wire because you basically got six volts from the battery going in here. When you turn the key on, the electricity flows to the coil. And that sticks out through the firewall, and this is the coil wire that goes to your distributor, threads on right here, and this is the wire that goes to your points. Now, the idea was, I mean, obviously you, you could just put six volts to this, you could steal a person's car, right? So this being encased prevented theft, I suppose. But it's easily taken apart. The wire goes into the rear of the coil. When you buy a new six volt coil, it, these are quite expensive. You can buy a new six volt coil and it'll have both the positive and the negative terminals on the end of the coil here. If you want to run that, it's easy to do. I've done it in my Plymouth. You just take the wire from here um, and run it through the firewall and back and hook it up to your ignition switch. Here's my 38 Plymouth and I can walk, walk right in the engine bay, how convenient. And here you can see a modern six volt coil. A negative wire going through the firewall right here into the ignition switch key. Bolts up nicely. Now, if you really were picking, you know, this isn't, you're going to lose points if you're in, being judged, but if it's a driver, which is what this car is, this works just fine. You could paint this black or buy, buy a black one. This one happened to be blue and I wasn't concerned about it, but paint that all black if you want to find a black one. And there you go. There's your new six volt coil mounted in there. People have said you can kind of push this apart and maybe get the uh, armor coil out of the way to replace the wire, but I don't know, I've not been able to do that. It's tricky, it's pressed together. Maybe, spend some time. So inside of here is the wire. You just undo the little tabs, this comes off. And the wire threads to here from the ignition switch. What I found was I don't know if you can see that. The wire in here is starting to fray the shielding on the wire. And that sits in there real close. And this bolts to the firewall with the coil. So guess what? That's ground. You can't have any ignition points touching ground where they're not supposed to. They have to go to ground exactly the right time when the points close. So with this sitting in there, bouncing down the highway and rubbing that intermittently touches ground and you know what my timing was jumping around I, I had a uh, timing light on there and it was jumping around and I was trying to troubleshoot and figure out why I think it was this so I had a spare coil 
and I took this off the spare coil because the, the coil was working fine. I thought it was. I didn't, I didn't want to change too much. I'm trying to troubleshoot and narrow it down to exactly what the issue was. So I just replaced this piece. The ignition key came out of there easily. You just push a little pin, pull the tumbler out, put it in. The new one here, the spare one, and the wire inside was in perfect condition. And lo and behold, my timing stabilized. So that, like I said, that threads on that bolt there. You cannot have this touching any other surface, part of the coil here, because then it's going to ground and you're pooched. And that wire gets, it's not a lot of room in there. It's pretty tight. That wire's touching ground. Not good. So, she's coming together nicely. Uh, I'm happy she's run smooth. Um, I think the next thing to tackle is the valve set. Let's get to a valve set. Uh, just need to make sure it's right. I've yet to do that. I've been chasing lots of other little demons. It's just getting better every day. So let's get into the valves. So we've got really good access here now with both windows out. That literally took minutes. Um, next come off the valve covers and we'll get in there and have a look at those valves. All right, I've decided I'm not gonna progress further on the valve set video on this episode. There's just way too much information. I started to edit this video and uh, had full intentions of putting the full valve set in on here, but holy smokes, I got about 50 videos to edit, and it's gonna be a massive video. So let's cut to the uh, little feature on the Dodge Ram logo I talked about. We'll end it there. In the next couple days, I'll be back with a new video on the full valve set. So make sure you check back. You'll see it soon. Thanks, hope you liked this video. Hope you got some good quality information from it, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. So I'm out riding my bike this morning with my wife, and I see this, and I'm thinking, this is Mopar content. Oh, wow. These are Rams. I've got to get this on my Mopar channel. All right, so we recognize the Ram logo from most of the trucks today, but it's been around actually on the, on the Dodge cars since 1931. Uh, the owner of uh, Mopar, which was uh, Walter P. Chrysler, um, he held the name Dodge Brothers for about seven years after he bought the company, he had a respect for the family. But after seven years, he dropped the brothers and just started calling his vehicles Dodges. And it was about time they come up with a custom logo for his cars. Um, he hired uh, a University of Michigan arts professor. Uh, his name was Arvard Tennyson Fairbanks to come up with some ideas for a hood ornament. And Arvard came up with a bunch of animals and Walter didn't really like them. A horse or a bear and a, a puma or a panther. And he's like, no, no, this doesn't work. But they were going through a wildlife book and they saw... Uh, this ram and they realized the ram is a tough little animal that will not back down from anything and it's got quite a reputation as being very tough so Walter liked that idea and then he said well what does a ram have to do with you know my Dodge car and the artist said that well if anybody ever sees a ram coming down the road at them they're gonna dodge it and Walter loved it 
So they started putting it on the cars and then it went onto the trucks for a number of years and then it disappeared for a while and then it came back and it's still on the trucks today, the Ram trucks. So you can see here, um, these uh, Rams, the one on the left walking in, like he's, he's like, you want a piece of me? You want to go? You want to have around with me? He's not backing down from anything, this guy. He's like, he thinks I'm checking out his girlfriend or something. So anyways, tough little animals. There's a little bit of piece of history for you. Have a good one.